Oh man. Just another day of work, huh? Just getting back to the grind. The grind set. Oh, it's missing something. A little bit of spice up here. Let's get dangerous, boys. Get angry. Going across. Yup. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. Fill this bitch up. Bring in the S2K, baby. Gotta have the legend. S15 right next to it. Get the S's next to each other. Take a picture. Take a picture. My Toyota. And yes, sir. I mean, this is basically the kings over here. Hit that, hit that little camber. Fast and furious. Man, single headlights on this is so clean. <laughs> Get the fuck in here, boy. Get in the picture. Get in the picture. Looking good. <laughs> I'm all, I'm honestly okay with that being that big. Beep, 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 beep. But find yourself a spot right in the middle. Enter the king, boy. The king. Little flying enchilada. Ah. <sighs> Life is good. This is the track, this is the car, and this will absolutely change your life. It's my girlfriend, Sauce. Go get it right now. Here is the website. I'm um, shamelessly plugging the fuck out of it. I absolutely live by this stuff. Okay, so we are on Mugello. It's 13 laps, and I'm going to walk you guys through uh, my first qualifying session for Mugello. So coming up to the line, I'm going to have the telemetry up for you guys to look at as well. Obviously, full throttle through here. You're going to want to open this one up as just about as far as you can get to the left. So it's a right-hander, a really interesting right-hander. It's very long, long braking zone, slowly trail off, using second gear for a little bit of more, little little bit of rotation, but mainly for power, honestly, to dig you out of that hole. Braking right as that curb comes to you, want to open up the chicane as much as you can while maintaining speed, of course, and um, not a great showing. We probably could have used more of the exit right, right there on this lap, but we didn't. Braking at that 50, down to third gear, kind of want to throw the car through here. You want to keep the speed extremely high through this second chicane, a lot faster than that first chicane. Braking at this little, like, steward's house on the left, maybe that's an outhouse, I don't really know. Cutting this curb as much as you can, hustling the car to the center of the track to just slightly open up um, this downhill section. Braking probably after that curb is optimal. We broke a little bit before that curb. Ride all the way out and kind of brake as you ride off of that curb and then build up power as you come up the hill. You can use basically all of that runoff. Braking at the, there's a little, like a, it's hard to see. I'm actually using a marker on the wall there, uh, the right side. Basically just pushing through the chicane as you would push through a chicane. You can take those sausage curbs and use that exit on, on uh, use the curb on the exit. Also use the curb as the entry to corner 12, which is where we are here. You want to treat this as a double apex. Uh, optimally, you want to kind of miss that first apex, but I end up missing both of the apexes and going way too deep. You can cut a lot of these curbs through, that's basically just a flat out chicane. Final corner of the track braking just after or kind of at that orange down to third gear. You want to hold it pretty close. There's a little bit of camber right there on the exit. Basically, you want to find full throttle as soon as you get through that camber and then you ride out and finish the lap. This, uh, this wasn't our best lap, but it wasn't a bad one. Crossing the line um, with a 150.96, which was good enough on this occasion to put us in P, I think we're in P7. And looking at the times, you can see that, I mean, the guys at the front, the, the, that guy's doing a 49.7. He is ridiculously fast. We'll see him throughout the week. As we get into this one, we are starting on the inside, which is lovely. Uh, odd numbers on the grid gives you the inside. So we're going to be able to hold tight to the right. We have cars on our left, cars on our right, and we're almost going four wide here for a moment. I recognize that and end up breaking a little bit extra. It's very easy to get caught into an accident in turn one, especially when you're like four wide. So two guys, go through there we also have that guy going through that's going to move us down into p9 to start which i mean i'm not too upset about it looks like they're kind of holding each other up ahead as uh, that yellow car took a very narrow entrance we don't get a very good exit out of that chicane as a matter of fact we are side by side with marcin car number four here who he's a quick driver but i feel like he was struggling a bit um at the beginning of this week or maybe not really struggling but he just hadn't practiced as much as 
I had. I, I had, I had uh, started thinking about this week about halfway through the Norge Life because, man, the Norge Life was rough to me. So riding in P9 and, I mean, everybody's kind of found a rhythm here, which is really nice. It may not stay like that, but for the moment, it feels really good. And this is this track is, uh, I mean, it flows really well. It does require a lot of focus. Heading into the final corner, and the car ahead is looking to make a move onto, I think that's... I'm not sure of the numbers. That guy's name is Aurelius. I think his name is Aurelius on the outside ahead of us. So he's looking to make a move up the inside of Aurelius. They are too wide as we head down the straight to start lap number two. And we are following Aurelius on the inside, soaking up his slipstream all of the way down. Still too wide, and it looks like they're going to be too wide into the first corner. We are too wide as well with Marcin, who's on our outside. So we are taking the inside line. And the inside through here, we, we do end up making some contact on... Uh, on this case, the inside is basically going to give you that position. It's very hard to make it work around the outside unless you start ahead of the car um, who's on your inside, which he didn't, so it's very hard to make that one work. End up holding off the position for there. Car number five looking to make a move up the inside, up around the outside of car number 11. They make contact, and he goes spinning off of the track. That will promote us up into P8. It's also going to slow down the car at the front of this group. Car number 8 ahead, looking to make a move up the inside of Aurelius down turn 6. Successfully sends it through. It's going to put him side by side. He has the outside, which turns into the inside, which is almost not where you want to be for this next corner, but Aurelius kind of gives that one up. Aurelius is car number 6, by the way, the car ahead of us. So they switch positions, and that brings them both back to me. I take a very, very wide line up the hill, and there's really no benefit to doing that. Heading towards the next chicane, Aurelius breaks slightly early. I'm assuming he's looking to open this up and get a better exit than the car ahead of him. However, it's um, it's kind of iffy through there. It, you, you can do open up that second uh, chicane, but you lose so much time opening it up that it basically evens out. So it's really about uh, this corner, which looking at car number eight ahead, he's almost going up the inside of, I think that's car number 11, the yellow car. So he is now in battles with him and I am still behind Aurelius. I'm, I'm really close to him. So I'm thinking I may be able to send a move here up the inside. Am I going to try it? Moving to the inside at the last second into third gear up the inside and he's holding us to a decently tight line. We could have used more space there. However, we don't. That's going to end up sending us side by side and we make slight contact as uh, we make our way onto the straight to start the third lap. He does have just enough of a run that we're going to tuck behind him, potentially looking for a move into turn one, but I don't feel confident in it at this point. I kind of back off and open up the corner just slightly for myself, hoping that I can get a better run out of this corner. It doesn't really look like that's going to happen. If anything, I might have hurt my run. Marcim is right behind us at this point, making contact with us actually slightly through there, and that contact is going to put him just a little bit behind me, actually. Car number 18 opening it up, and I think Marcin may have cut the cut the corner because he slows down a lot, but uh, probably for a slowdown, I would assume. Skipping ahead, and this is turn 12 of that same lap. We really don't have any pressure from behind. Following car number six still, and there's beginning to, uh, there a gap is beginning to form ahead of car number six to car number eight, and that was slightly worrisome to me as I honestly felt pretty confident in my pace, but I was having trouble getting around this guy. Lap four, as we head towards turn one, he's gonna take the inside. I'm on the outside for turn one. It's possible, like I said, to make this move work. It's very difficult. We try and go deep, end up sending ourselves slightly too deep, not getting quite enough angle. As we approach the first chicane, we are going to back off slightly, try and open up our exit as much as we can and get a better run out of this corner than him. We do get a really, really solid run, but before we cover where this goes, uh, car number four behind us, Marcin, is making a move around the outside of car number 18 there. His 18 got slight snap oversteer on entry, and that slowed him down quite a bit. So back to where we were. We have a very good run on car number six, looking to make a move up the inside of this next corner, and we end up backing off, just really kind of showing and trying to scare him a little bit. He does get a poor run out of the next chicane as well, but it's not going to be enough to let us through. This is corner eight, I believe, of that same lap, following him getting a better run up the hill looking to make a move up the inside breaking in third not quite there and he's going to remain on the outside which is the inside for the next corner we're going to try and get as good of a run as we can here try and get a better run than him moving to the inside and he's going to kind of close that one off for us so i break slightly conservatively there a little bit early um not wanting to get into an accident and just kind of reset and have a go potentially at the start of the next lap car number eight has gotten around car number 11 meanwhile you see him way up the road from us however car number 11 is falling back towards car number six so that could open up another position for us peeking up the inside but we're not really going to go for that one we are pretty far back it does make him break 
a little bit longer than you typically would through that corner. However, as soon as you get on that camber, everybody's run is just about equal. So this is turn one of the next lap, lap five. He's gonna move to the inside just before I was about to do that. So it closes me off. Gonna try and hold him slightly tight. However, my focus completely shifts uh, from getting around him to just taking the position from the yellow car who went wide. Marcin is gonna try and follow us through too wide through the chicane. Before we go any further, I'm gonna fire an RPG at the like and subscribe button. And also I have a wager for you guys. Okay, hear me out. All right, so today, same thing with the octopus. Uh, today we're gonna be shooting in the bucket there. She's gonna get five shots. If she makes any of them in that pink bucket, you have to buy a sauce, okay? You have to buy a sauce. I'm gonna put the link in the screen right here. This is her sauce, you have to buy that, okay? We're going on the honor system here. Number three. Oh. That does not count, that does not count. <laughs> Got number four. Oof. I have an idea, I have an idea. Okay, coach, I wanna be a coach. Okay, so look, look, look. You keep, you keep hitting it too far to the left. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is move over, like, one more step. Okay, from there. Okay, so now, now let's try it. Oh, she missed it. <laughs> well, it was a, um, I mean, she had she had five chances, so that one's really on her. So Marcim is around the outside, and he's going to dive up through the exit. It was definitely net code. It's car number 13, that's his number. Uh, anyway, he spins out, car number 18 runs into the back of him, and that's basically just gonna get everybody off of our tail, which is super nice. So we are continuing to move forward up into P7 at this point. This is lap number six, still riding behind car number six. He breaks really early on this occasion. We just about take him out right there, and uh, that's going to end up sending us wide on the exit as we kind of try to slow down, get the car under control, and pull way to the left. It'll be a whole lap before we're back on him, looking for a move up the inside. He kind of closes it up as we move over there. So, I mean, fair to him, he was ahead of us, I suppose. And I was definitely struggling finding uh, places to overtake. Pretty much the only place I had been overtaking on this track was into turn one and I needed to get more creative. I knew that I needed to get more creative. Marcin behind us getting some overseer on the exit of the first chicane. That's gonna drop him off of us a little bit further. And that would kind of be a trend as he would he would start to make these little mistakes and open up the gap between me and Marcin, which is allowing me less and less pressure and more and more opportunity to kind of play around with overtaking opportunities in order to get around car number six, who is currently sitting in P6. So I am car number seven in p7 and that is car six in p6 as we come across lap eight only 13 laps so we've got i think five more i want to say he moves to the inside to defend this one too wide as we head to uh into turn one and like i said it's pretty tough to make it work around the outside trying to play with a deeper line however that one was way too deep to ever work in any circumstance not to mention the oversteer that we got mid corner however he doesn't have a great run through the first chicane so that should allow us to kind of stay on his tail he also gets a little bit of snap over steer it looks like as he uh exits marcim is kind of watching this all go down just ominously lurking behind us as we go through the second chicane and i'm keeping tabs on that I i'm not letting it take over my mind but i do recognize that he's there skipping ahead to lap 10 corner 12 and this is a corner that was really i think this it, it was very different the way that car number six took this and the way that i took it he was braking a lot harder than me uh, through the corner, which kind of messes up my line as I don't brake super hard at first. I carry a lot of speed in and go for a really late apex. He sends it very deep into the final corner though, and this may uh, open up an opportunity for us, getting on the power, finding the camber, and he does the same thing just on the outside. So we are going to be right on his tail as we cross on to start lap number 11, soaking up his slipstream, perhaps in a position to look for a move into turn one. He is going to move over to the the right to take a defensive line and once again we find ourselves on the outside however our plan of attack is slightly different now we've tried it around the outside multiple times it wasn't happening for us so we're going to tuck in behind him and try applying pressure just want to scare him a little bit here looking for him to get a bad run out of the second part of the chicane while we are focusing on a better exit and it's really just going to end up canceling itself out so we remain behind him 
And skipping ahead to corner 12, and you can see the difference in our lines. Not that my line was correct, but it was just very different than his. So I really had to be careful because he brakes pretty hard and ends up like swinging his car around while I like to go just a little bit deeper and carry more speed all of the way through. It is going to end up giving us a better line through that final chicane. Heading into the last corner, we are right on his tail, and he's going to move to a defensive line during the braking zone. Kind of scared me a little bit. I was thinking about moving up the inside and end up sending myself actually a little bit deep as he goes to the inside, and it just kind of spooked me. Car number four has, I mean, he's probably two seconds behind us at this point, maybe a second, 1.7 seconds, somewhere around there. Crossing onto the penultimate lap, car number six still ahead of us. He's going to do this thing where he brakes and then moves moves all of the way to the inside and th this that was uh, something he was continuing to do throughout this race he would break and then as soon as he starts breaking he moves to the inside instead of breaking on the outside and cutting in which was welcome uh, because it would allow me to stay with him more and more and at the same time it was unwelcome as I really could never look up the inside unless I was completely alongside heading into the corner which is kind of difficult to do you're really relying on somebody to have a pretty significantly bad exit through that final corner if uh in order to get your car placed side by side with them down corner six and this is where we start to feel some understeer i mean you can see just how much my wheel was turned there and it was really i think me just not initiating oversteer well enough with my brake we're really starting to fall off at this point, having to modulate our throttle pretty heavily in order to just stay on the track through those corners. And that definitely slowed me down a lot. It basically put me completely off of his tail by the time we enter the uh, front straight here. And this is the final lap. So had I been closer there, you know, potentially could have looked for a move here. We're pretty far back. We're still going to show for it, but not really looking for it. Once again, there he is uh, pulling to the inside as soon as he starts braking. We're going to try and get on the throttle earlier as he goes slightly wide into the first chicane. We are side by by side I'm on the outside and I'm not gonna send it too hard there I probably could have in hindsight um, but yeah we don't really look for it it's gonna work out in our favor though as he drives off of the track and then we can't manage to get onto the right side in time we just got like our steering got a bit hairy and we got thrown thrown around as we left that curb so we're side by side into the second chicane I'm gonna end up backing off Marcim at this point has completely caught up to us he is in uh, p8 at the moment so he's trying to get p7 from me and car number six is beginning to drive drop off ahead as I had to recollect my car through that second chicane after slowing down to let him through. Finding the, the angle a lot nicer on this lap though, not letting the understeer ruin my run as it did last lap. Braking right as we come off of these curbs and building up the throttle up the hill. Going to use as much of this as we possibly can, just about going into the dirt there, and need to carry a lot of speed through here, both on entry and exit. He completely misses the entry curb, uh, that apex there, so that's going to give him a bad run, and we are definitely closing up to him some. Corner 12, I know that I'm faster than him through here if I hit it correctly. Going to break as little as we can, get right up behind him, get the car turned around, find the oversteer at the right moment, and apply the throttle and we are going to be right on his tail. Hopefully this slipstream will do something for me. Honestly, I would need it to be a miracle. And as we come into the final corner, braking at the 100 and he's gonna move to the inside. I think about going around the outside and really just send it a bit too deep, get some oversteer, manage to catch it. However, that is going to leave us pretty much ousted on the outside and Marcin's gonna slip through. So props to him for sticking that one out and we will end up crossing the line in P8, dropping the ball for P7 on the final corner, really due to nobody but myself. I got way too anxious uh, for that position. Marcin then blows his engine, which was a great little celebration for getting P7 for him, and we will uh, drive a couple corners and then park it right there on the apex of that corner, basically. Here are the results for that one. We ended up losing a lot of safety rating, um, mainly due to off tracks, but we did gain some safety rate, or I rating, excuse me, in terms of lap times, I felt like I kind of got stuck behind that guy, so I was looking forward to putting in a better qualifying lap uh, for my next one so I could try and run away a little bit. And into the next race we go. There was a race in between these two, uh, which was a pretty boring one. This is my qualifying session, and I actually got an off track right there on my second lap which would have been my uh, best lap, but it wasn't to be. And I really just ended up sending it a little bit too hard there. So that will uh, land us in P5 for this one with a 51 flat. And Joey uh, Joey up ahead of us with a 50.5, absolute banger of a lap. And there he is in the alt pole racing livery. So we got two pole racing cars on the track. Mugello, we got 13 laps to go, both starting on the inside. Uh, car number three on our outside. It gets a pretty good run here. And I think something I've been struggling is this turn one. 
so I'm trying not to lose any positions on turn one. I tend to lose a couple, and sure enough, I mean, I'm going to end up backing it up here just a little bit, letting car number three through. The cars behind are too wide, so I'm not too worried about that situation. Three looking to make a move around the outside of, uh, I don't know who that is, the white car, and they're going to go too wide through the entirety of the chicane. I get a decent run out of there. Already, we're losing time to Joey at this point. But it looks like they are going to settle down into a row here through the second chicane, which is great. It means we can probably begin to move forward at pace. And I am slightly worried about the cars behind me. There was a decent amount of space behind me, but um, I just didn't want to get caught up in that at all. Although, I mean, really, they're not holding me up all that much at the moment. There's probably three or four tenths between us as I'm kind of just watching them go back and forth. Three is hot on this guy's tail. And you can kind of tell when somebody is like battling like this because they're turning in at different times, trying to get an advantage over each other. Uh, the guy behind isn't just like riding purely behind him. Joey up ahead, sitting in P3, those two guys. And then we have me with a decent little gap uh, from me to the car behind which is always nice to see i enjoy not having immediate pressure somebody sliding across the track behind us that was car number 17 as he headed through the uh i guess second to last chicane and car number six looking to make a move up the inside kind of just pit maneuvers him off of the track and that is uh that's very sad a very very sad moment for car number 17 the white car ahead goes very deep into corner 12. Car number three looking to take advantage of that, but very difficult to do. You don't really want to go too wide through this uh, final chicane. It's like, it's full throttle. So if you go too wide through there, you're losing a lot of time to basically anybody else who is going full throttle. Car number three looking up the inside of the white car, and it looks like he's going to make it work for a second, pushing through, trying to gain track position, but it's very, very tough to drive the outside car off of their line as it's such a wide corner. And starting lap two, they are too wide. Car number nine, decent amount of space between myself and him, so I'm not worried too much about that. Joey up ahead through turn one, gets a little bit of snap over steer, and as we come through the corner, I think car number three sees that, ends up settling behind the white car. Everybody say bye, Joey. Um, it's, not the, it's not to be the end of Joey. He will be back, though, so trust me. Um, I mean, you, you don't sleep on Joey. That man is quick. Three cars separating myself and Joey, and he's definitely got some work to do ahead of him. But something else to mention about this race is that this split wasn't um there weren't a lot of splits there weren't a lot of people racing so there were really fast guys at the front and then people at the back were a bit off of the pace car number three ahead looking to make a move at the beginning of lap three up the inside of the white car sends it a bit deep and he's going to be able to cut back on track before i am able to really take advantage of that mistake but the white car is able to avoid that and gets through there safely i mean everybody gets through there safely i don't even think anybody got an off track there Meanwhile, as that was happening, Joey is looking to make a move up the inside of this blue and white car, almost hitting the car ahead, getting a little bit of oversteer, but catching it cleanly. So, I mean, clean dive. I would call that a clean dive. And through this first chicane, he is going to immediately put a bit of a gap between himself and the car behind, getting a decent enough exit that should keep him safe. By the end of, or I guess this is the middle of that lap, he's looking up the inside of car number 15, I think that is, through the second to last chicane, going to get that one done on entry. So two cars disposed of, and this man is absolutely flying through the pack. Meanwhile, we are still riding behind these guys, just kind of watching this battle as car number three has gotten himself right back up behind the white car. And I was sure that, you know, the battle wasn't over. There were many laps left, nine laps to be exact. I believe there's nine laps left at this point. There was a lot of time for fighting, and I just kind of wanted to watch these guys go at it for a little bit longer potentially see an accident between the two and gain two positions for free which would be awesome this is lap number four joey is right up or not right up behind i'd say i don't know three tenths four tenths behind car number nine he's going to be soaking up that slipstream though so there's sure to be some more action behind us car number three trying the same move once again up the inside breaking very late and he's going to get it done on the white car who is car number seven so I, I will call him car number seven from now on joey repeating his move from last lap up the inside of car number nine very clean on this occasion and he is through with no problem at all just a few seconds ahead i am continuing to follow car number seven and car number three who have swapped positions so uh, this car number seven is looking a little bit vulnerable as I've mentioned before you see somebody move back one position and as the car who is now directly behind them you know you get hungry for that position they start to look vulnerable and I don't want to do anything stupid I don't want to force any crazy moves but I am keeping in mind that you know potentially within this lap or the next lap will be my best opportunity as 
keeping that momentum, whether it's up for me or if it's down for somebody else is important. Momentum is pretty big in racing, I believe. Following car number seven through the final corner and we get a pretty decent exit. We have a bit more slipstream to him than he does to the car ahead of him. I'd say he's probably almost a full second away from the car ahead of him and we are probably within like two or three tenths of him. Crossing onto lap number five and as we approach T1, I've made up my mind. I'm fucking sending it and sure enough, I sent it. You can see me flying through there, breaking a lot less than him, just barely barely managing to get it stopped right in front of him. That was probably the cleanest dive that I've had on this track so far, and perhaps that I will all week. So we get the job done cleanly up into P4 now, and car number three ahead of us sitting in a podium position. He is getting quite a lot uh, or quite loose through that first chicane, trying to really focus on our exit here, stay on his tail and stay in his slipstream. Potentially repeat that move onto the next lap is my initial thought as honestly that move is just, I, I feel like it's the cleanest move that you can make on this track. There, I mean, there is opportunity for moves in a lot of these corners, but that is one that relies on nothing else other than your braking. Joey, not all that far behind us, and lap number six coming through the final chicane. We're in a good spot, but we're gonna need a better run than him through this final corner if we want any chance into the first corner of the next lap. He does end up sending it pretty deep. It doesn't really hurt your run. It can actually help your run. We try and hold a slightly tighter line and I'd say we probably gained maybe a tenth. He begins swerving through here just in a little effort to break the toe. It's not going to happen though. I'm remaining right on his tail as we cross onto lap number seven. And once again, boys, in my head, I've got it set already. It's happening. Looking to send a move this time around the outside and we're breaking slightly early here. We want to keep control over our car. Worst thing to do uh, would be going too wide and yeah, we kind of do that. Not so wide that we lose a position, but we definitely lose any attempt of um, continuing that battle on this lap, or at least through these next couple of quarters, coming through the chicane, and we're basically right back where we were before we started that whole fiasco. Down corner number six, he goes extremely deep. That's going to end up slowing him down for sure. Looking to open it up more than him. End up really hurting myself there as I take a little bit too much curve on the inside. Unsettles the car, and that puts me under fire from car number seven, hoping that I can clean this up really quickly and separate myself from him as quickly as I can. That helps a lot. Car number three ahead drives into the dirt, gives us a little bit better slipstream. He also completely misses the apex of the first bit of this uh, penultimate chicane, and he's got two mistakes in a row on the last two corners, so I'm hoping that that trend continues. However, uh, I mean, I guess it kind of continues. I lock up my tires going through corner 12, and that's going to open up that gap once again that I just got so lucky uh, for it to close. However, he's going to completely miss the first apex of the last chicane, and that allows us to close up the gap a lot because he did have to lift there, and I was able to take that flat out. It's going to make a big difference in speed. As we come around the final corner, we're almost back to where we started this lap, so it has been quite the yo-yo between the two of us. He, once again, is just doing a little bit of effort to break the toe. Magic windshield wiper there, getting rid of uh, all of the bad juju that has been affecting me for the last couple of laps. And on this lap, it's gonna be different. We're pretty far behind, but we're going for it anyway. Braking, taking the inside. Car number seven looking to follow us up through there. Three is on the outside. Seven looking to push wide. It makes very, very slight contact. Three is going to break later. Claim the inside of the first bit of the chicane. Seven ends up backing out there. And Joey at this point has entered the chat. He is right behind car number seven. All of that fighting through that first chicane between car number seven and car number three has immediately allowed me to open up a gap as I am now in the podium position trying to run away with that and Joey is going to look to follow me through these two guys as they have really been fighting this entire race and I feel like sometimes it happens where two people get into almost like a bit of a beef match where you have you know your arch nemesis and they sometimes just like let other people through it's all about that one guy you know so these guys are just continuing to battle um I feel like I made my way through there pretty swiftly the gap has opened up as I am now able to completely run and take my racing line skipping ahead to lap number 11 joey is putting a lot of pressure under car number seven who is claiming the inside of the first corner joey is looking to make a move around the outside going very deep and um that's not going to happen for him on this occasion almost getting an off track but managing to keep it within the white lines car number seven then totally totally whiffing the apex for both the first and second part of the first chicane joey is going to close basically right back up onto his tail skipping ahead to turned seven on lap 12 which this is the penultimate 
the penultimate lap. Joey is, I mean, basically right where he was following these two guys through and it looks like they might be putting each other under some pressure car number seven ends up driving into the dirt slightly that's going to slow him down uh just enough to disallow him from making any type of move onto car number three as well as allowing joey right back on his tail we're going to hop on board with joey here as uh we finish out this lap through corner number 12 you'll notice his line is a lot more narrow than mine just different lines uh, like i said before car number three locks up his tires through corner 12 which is going to put him side by side with car number seven and they're actually going to go through the chicane side by side which loses them a lot of time especially car number three and you can tell the difference in speed joey moves to the outside for the final corner he's got car number three on his inside following car number seven who can't quite get his car onto the inside car number three is going to manage to find that space looking for the exit they make super slight contact contact three spins off to the side catches it though so he's not in the dirt and joey sweeps through for two positions as they make their way onto the final lap tucking ahead of car number seven before they cross the line and uh joey's got to defend this one so car number seven looking to make a move to the inside but joey is going to move all of the way over there before he has any attempt at that seven looking now to make a move around the outside doesn't really have much of a choice he's gonna break and settle behind joey potentially looking for a move somewhere else Else. car number three is kind of dropped off at this point as uh his car being unsettled from that slight contact kind of messes him up joey really unsettles the car through the second part of the chicane gonna end up taking the inside for the second chicane car number seven looking to make a move around the outside but does not want it he does not want it joey pulls away and he would continue to pull away throughout the rest of this lap, claiming P4 on the penultimate lap and running to the finish line with it. Meanwhile, we crossed the line in P3, so a podium finish for us felt really good. Joey crossing the line just a few seconds behind us. Car number seven, not all that far behind him. And man, what a race. After, I mean, the difference between this and Nordschleife for me has been night and day. Here are the results. Absolutely loving this track so far. Losing a shit ton of safety rating, gaining basically the exact same amount of I rating, and that is a podium for us. The two guys at the front, they were quick. They were very fast. Like, they they dusted us. Uh, you can see Joey actually put in a 50.6. I'm telling you guys, Joey is not to be fucked with. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, please take a chance on my channel or checking out some of my other videos, and I'm willing to bet that you're going to enjoy those ones as well. Thank you so much for watching.